Good morning. Warm well, welcome to our council meeting on the 5th of September, another month gone. Uh, and uh, this morning, to open our meeting, welcome again Bobby from St Paul's Church, he, uh, supported with Martin. So uh, welcome and invite you to open our meeting. Thank you, Your Worship Councillors. Privileged to be here this morning and to open in prayer. Shall we pray? Our gracious God, we come before you with gratitude. We thank you for being a God of love who is with us here, who will never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you for the calling you have given every one of us to be good stewards of your creation and to love our neighbors as ourselves. I thank you today for these, your servants, our mayor, our staff, and our councillors. I give thanks for the way of service they have chosen to take up on our behalf. We all come before you, trusting that you alone can help us and hold us in your love and peace. And so we pray that you would be honored today through the decisions of this council. We pray that our common good is upheld. We pray for wisdom, for strength, for courage, to do what is right and good for all citizens. May we put the interest of others before our own. May we act with love for the common good. May we be good neighbors, recognizing your image in every person. We thank you for our towns and district. Thank you for our elected officials, the businesses, the churches, the families, and the individuals that make our district the great place that it is. This we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Um, Bobby and Martin, is there anything that you would like to share with us uh, going on in the community spaces that you work? Thank you, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the community service next Sunday. So next Sunday. Yeah. Yes. Yes. No. I'm I'm here to learn. Uh, my turn's next month. <laughs> next. Uh, you don't want to get me started as often well going on. <laughs> We've got uh, civic centre carols that we're uh, hopefully uh, going to be able to run this year. We're very uh, reliant on the funding from the council for that. Um, we may have to go to the concert chamber this year instead of the gym uh, just because it's so so much cheaper um, we have an evening service Sunday evening service coming up on the 15th at New Life there's nothing in the evening here in Fielding so we're uh, we're trialing that to see how that goes um, yeah there's lots of other things coming up excellent what have you got a date for the Christmas 15th of December um, I'm I'm not sure what whether that's the same day as the parade. No, the parade's the second Sunday, the which will be the eighth. Yeah. So so that yeah the the brass band are, are keen again, but their leadership is um, flexible at the moment. So um, we just yeah they are the they are the key item. So Excellent. Key. We've just got to put the rest together. Thank you. I'd be happy to talk to you afterwards about um, looking to help with some funding through some other sources. Thank you. Um, thank you for joining us today and thank you for opening our meeting and um, enjoy the rest of your week. Take care. Thank you. <clears throat> right. Uh, so uh, before we move into our agenda this morning, I want to just take a couple of moments to acknowledge the passing of the Māori King. And um, I'm going to hand over to Councillor Bell just to share that with us, and then we'll have a moment's silence. <laughs> Tēnā koe he worship. E te kāhui āriki kingi tu heitia pōtatau te whirawhiru ki tua whitu, te kingi o te korewai o kotahitanga, o te iwi Māori, te kingi o te motu o Aotearoa, moi mai rā e te kāmaka o te kotahitanga, moi mai rā. Kua tukena e manawatu e tainui ki te tonga, o mā tau roi mata mōu e kingi tu heitia. E tau tuku ana, e aroha ana ki te whānau pani, ki ngā whānau o te kingitanga, ki waikato tainui. Ki tēnei rā, ka huri tātou whakaaro ki te whakatauki, 
Waikato Tanifaro, he piko he tanifa, he piko he tanifa. No reira, e moe, e oki oki, e te ariki, rire, rire, hau, paimarire. This morning, we, Manawatu District Council, acknowledge the sad passing of King Itu Heitia. Today is his final day with the people, and he'll be laid to rest at Topiri Maunga to be with his Fano and his ancestors. May he rest. It's a time for our council to acknowledge the pauritanga, the sadness of our Manawatu Māori communities, of which all our marae and hapu in our district attend to the tangihanga of our king and acknowledge our whakapapa, genealogical cords, our hononga, ancestral connections, and give thanks to a monarch that inspired unity and encouraged leadership for our youth. More importantly, we send our love to his whānau, his family, the kingi movement, and to iwi Māori on this day. May I ask, in respect of the significance of his passing, we honour his mana with a minute of silence. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, Councillor Quarry. Uh, so apologies. Uh, Councillor McFadgen is in China. Um, he is representing the city and the district council at a economic development forum. So um, I trust that's going well. I trust he got there. He had some um, flight disruptions. And this morning we have our chief executive on Zoom. He's keeping his bugs at home. So welcome, Shane. And so we move to item three. This is confirmation of minutes from our previous meeting. There is a recommendation there, page six. Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Councillor Ford. Your Worship, I... I'd like to move that the minutes of the council meeting held on the 15th of August 2024 be adopted as a true and correct record. Thank you. Uh, do I have a seconder for that motion, please? Uh, Councillor Quigley, thank you. Put the motion, all those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against? Motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, item four, declaration of interest. Are there any topics on our agenda today that elected members may wish to declare? None? Great, thank you. So we can move uh, straight into our presentations. This is um, always a really exciting part of our meeting when we hear from um, people in our community who've been representing us in their different different sports and talents. Uh, so this morning, first up, welcome Millie. Come and join us at the table. Bring mum too if you wish. Uh, welcome, Millie, and uh, you've been competing at the World Triathlon Multi-Sport Championships, so really interested to hear what that's all about. As long as it's green. It's green, it's green. Yep, it's green. <laughs> Hello, my name is Millie Evans. I was a recipient of the representative fund where I was selected to represent New Zealand at the 2024 World Triathlon Multisport Championships in Townsville, Australia. I was a part of the Triathlon New Zealand team where I competed in the age group 16 to 19 years old Aquathon. The funding that I received helped with some of the costs for me to attend. They were flights, accommodation and entry fees. As you can imagine, this was a huge cost with just three things and from the Manawatu District Council gave me a grant this made it all a little bit more achievable for me to go. In this event, I pl placed six in my age group, which I was really pleased with as I had trained for this for the past four months. My training involved doing three swim sessions of one and a half hours each three times a week and four run sessions a week. And some days I did both a swim and run session and then I also did a bike ride one or two times a week. Throughout the months leading up, 
to the race, my coaches made me do a mock aquathon where I swam in the pool and then did a run around the street so I could practice the aquathon format and transitions before going to Townsville. These sessions were hard, but I kept going as I knew the experience in Townsville was going to be one that I need, that I wanted to do well in. I have two coaches who planned my training, so when I came to leaving New Zealand, I was fit and healthy and ready to race the best I could. Some of the highlights from the trip were racing against other like-minded athletes from other countries, experiencing the blue carpet finish line, doing a formal race briefing, racing in 25 to 30 degrees heat when I had to train in winter, winter weather over here, placing six in my race, meeting other people from different countries, having other New Zealanders in my race, staying in the team hotel where we could do all race prep together and enjoy some time after the race sightseeing and being a part of the trial for New Zealand team for the first time. For the upcoming summer season, I plan to race in several triathlon events in Kinloch, Mamunui, maybe, and the season will end with me travelling to Wanaka, where I'll race in the, in the New Zealand Secondary School Triathlon event. These races will be triathlon and aquathon. One day, it would be great to attend another world event in a different country where I can race a triathlon or aquathlon and try and do better than a sixth placing. But for now, I will focus on the upcoming summer season. I am looking forward to doing a triathlon overseas where I will take my bike and manage all the bike packing and then boarding my bike again ready to ride. There have been so many benefits of attending the World Triathlon Multi-Sport Championships as it gave me a real insight to what I want to achieve as I continue to race in triathlon and aquathlon. This is definitely, definitely something I want to do again and racing in terms of always helped me to decide this is my chosen sport and I want to continue to race at a higher level. It was great doing all the training and then having to travel overseas to race, where I also experienced travel delays and getting into Townsville at midnight and then adjusting to the heat and loss of sleep before my race. Going to Townsville made me realise just how much you have to think about food and getting going to the supermarket so I was race ready and not get sick. Townsville did have similar food to New Zealand, but if I was in another country, it would be harder to choose the right foods to eat. I would like to once again thank the Manawatu District Council for supporting my first international race experience overseas. I hope that I can con continue to achieve more of my goals where it sees me attending more international racing. Awesome. Well done. Um, <clears throat> thanks, Millie. Can you just repeat the sports that you did? There was biking, swimming and running. And running. How, how long was the run? Uh, it was a 2.5k run, a 1k swim and a 2.5k run. And you do them one after the other. Yeah. Sounds tiring. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's open it up. Any questions or comments from our team? Councillor Short. Thank you, Millie. Well done. Um, it's interesting we get quite a few people come and talk to us. And when you go overseas to compete for the first time, it's not the things that you think will put you off course that, that do. It's things like... Um, the food and the temperature and all those sorts of things and whether you get enough sleep. Um, and, you know, we even saw that in the, in the Olympics. So uh, now that you've done it once, you'll, you'll know different things to concentrate on and wish you well with the next one. Thank you. <clears throat> Councillor Ford. Yeah, well done, Millie. Uh, how, how many people did you compete against in the, in the Townsville event? Um, Approximately. I think there were about 20 in my age group. But I raced with the 19 to like 25 age group as well. Oh, wow. Right, so it's quite a big field and you got yeah. six in your age group. So that's that's outstanding. Yeah, well done. Well done. My son's done a um, couple of um, Ironman events. So I've been along to watch. I haven't ever participated, <laughs> but, I, but I have some understanding of what's involved and I completely admire what you're doing. Yeah. Well done. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, thanks, Millie. It's, it was a pleasure to be able to help you in a small way. Um, keep up, keep it up. And we look forward to seeing where you get to in the uh, next time in the uh, age group. So is it every year that you get to compete? Um. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah, she qualifies. Yeah. Yeah, so you have to qualify. So you're continually training throughout the year. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Um, thank you for coming this morning, and we wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you.
<clears throat> right. Um, so our, our other two representatives are not here this morning, so we can um, take them at another meeting so we can move straight into our public forum. And welcome, Gillian. Come and join us at the table. Gillian has asked to come and speak to us um, about rates and water meter invoice charges, so welcome. Just turn that button on to green and you're good to go. Okay, I'm Jill and I'm a Manawatu District Council rate payer. Um, and I just don't want to talk about my, well, it's all involved in my rate. So I've written down what I want to say so I don't forget anything. So I'm here today as I'm sick and tired of the council that has no accountability for anything. They just do whatever they want. I know I can't put you all in the same basket and some of you try and keep this council account accountable, but they don't appear to listen. All of you sitting here work for the ratepayers of the Manawatu district and not the other way around. We don't work for you. I hope you all took on board what Christopher Luxon said at the local government meeting. In hard times, do the basics. Work within your means. We have to. We can't just go and borrow and put ratepayers' properties up for security. If you hadn't noticed, the ratepayers are doing it hard. You put the rates up, and I know you will say only 7 or 8%, but did you also tell everyone that consents have gone up hugely? Did you publicly notify the district that if you're building a new house now, it will now cost you $54,000? This information is buried on page 31 of the council plan. That's an increase of 104%. That hasn't been publicly notified. Development contributions, what a joke. The subdivision owners already pay you thousands. So before you build a house in Fielding, you need to find another $54,000. And this is daylight robbery and extortion. How can you sleep at night? This is disgusting and despicable. Why am I paying more for my rates than someone with a lower valued property? I don't use any more water or go to the toilet more than others. Just because my property is of a high value, I pay more. How is that fair? I don't have any footpaths, street lights, nothing. Everything apart from the library and the Makino costs more. Extortion. Don't get me started on the $12 million library. Ridiculous waste of money. Why does someone on a similar valued property pay around $1,300 to $1,500 more, less in Palmerston North than we do? And don't quote, they have more rate payers. Yes, they do. So there is more infrastructure costs, but still cheap to live there. It is known fact that fielding is one of the highest rating charges in small town New Zealand. Second, I believe. Why is that? A very greedy council that doesn't know how to stop spending on unnecessary wants, not needs. Remember, elections are coming. Rate payers will deal to the binge spenders. We pay for water separately as we have a metre on our property. We have only ever been over once due to a water leak and had to pay extra, which is fine. But why, when we don't use our allocation, we have to pay for the water we don't even use, even though the metre is red? Isn't it supposed to be user pays? Another way of extorting money out of the rate payers. One year, our water was put on our rates, which made it cheaper. Obviously, the council didn't think that was a good idea. So back to water meters the next year. When does this council ever stop taking from the ratepayer? In hard times, you pull your horns in. You don't continue to spend willy-nilly. 12 million on a new library. We just needed to do the original library up and then it gets a new name that people can't pronounce. What's wrong with the Fielding Library? If we wanted a new name for the library, Shouldn't the citizens of Fielding had a say in what it should be called, as it is them that pay for it? Why was over $300,000 spent on a turnaround at the Marae at Wars Road? That wasn't publicly notified. Do you realise that EWIs have billions of dollars, probably more than the government? So why are ratepayers paying for this sort of thing when they should be going to the EWI for the money? I'm not against Maori, 
if that is what you think, as I'm part Maori myself and identify as one. They just have other avenues to get money for things like that. Why do people using the transfer station now have to pay to dump their green waste in concrete when it used to be free in the beginning? Central Environmental, a private company, is on ratepayer land and has scored hundreds of thousands of dollars in government grants. They make compost out of green waste. On sale at a profit, no doubt, crush the concrete and the same process on sale for a profit. They must be making plenty. Then, especially when you could dump for free, why aren't you looking after the citizens of the Manawatu district? <clears throat> dump fees are another extortion. Council utes, etc., drive up and down Kawakawa Road all the time, but can't even report when a pothole needs to be fixed. Do they drive around with their eyes shut? I can't believe this sort of nonsense. Why does it take five or six times or more to fix the potholes in Darras Road? Do it properly once and once only. The dump station where tourists, etc., with vehicles of high value, some in excess of $200,000, get lost in the potholes there, and also the truck dumps tight. Do the basics, Council. It can't be that hard. I have read that they're taking metal out of the Makino stream due to flooding issues. This is a great idea. So why can't you speak to Horizons and get them to take metal out of the Arua River and sell it to contractors? It could mean we might not have to have rate increases for a few years. The metal is a renewable resource. So why aren't we using it instead of buying it in? It would mean they wouldn't have to keep building the stock banks higher and higher like they do in China with the Yangtze River, which runs higher than the land behind it. It just seems councils love to spend other people's money. It doesn't make much sense. Which reminds me, part of our farm has been eaten away by the river, but it appears it still belongs to us. If that's the case, we could get metal out of the river and sell it to pay our rates or get discounted rates because we've lost our land. That's being entrepreneurial, don't you think? Why are we having to fundraise for CCTV cameras? This is of benefit to the whole community. This is the sort of thing council should be doing, not using rate power money for things that don't benefit the whole community in these hard times. Can you t please tell me also when the public notification for the solar farms was, please, and whereabouts will they be situated? Or is this another pyrolysis issue that the council hasn't notified anyone? Being dishonest yet again, is the solar farm application before council you do realise solar panels aren't biodegradable and have to be buried deep in the ground and last forever. One last thing, I hope the council don't have morning or afternoon teas or lunch lunches with the rate payer money as families in the district can't even afford to feed their families. If you want food, have potluck or bring a plate. Don't eat on rate payers' money. And also, as there are more than 140 staff, is that correct? Can you please clarify that? No accountability. This is what happens when councils can't live within their means. They think they're entitled to do whatever they want, and if they need more money, they borrow it, as they think the ratepayer will pay for it. Just remember, if you borrow too much and can't pay it back, your ratepayers that will lose their homes. Um, these are the sorts of many friends, neighbours and businesses acquaintances. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my concerns. Now, once I've finished here, I'll go back to work so I can pay my exorbitant rates. Thanks, Gillian. Um, you raise, there's a, there's a whole heap of topics yes, there, there is. in there. Um, I'd be interested in getting a copy of your notes. Yes. Because um, I think um, we, we don't have, this is not the opportunity to go and discuss all of those, but there are a number of topics in there that you haven't quite got the facts correct. Okay. And it's really important um, that when we're discussing this, um, that we base it on fact. And I, the, the one I just want to clear up is the development contributions have not risen. The uh, topic was brought to council and we have asked our team to go away and do some more work on that. So no decision has been made on development contributions and it will certainly go out for consultation before any decision is made. Perfect. 
So there's a number of things in there that we can comment on and um, and we'd be happy to go through those and come back to you mm -hmm. um, when we've got time to go through them and talk to our team. And the other one, just, just so you're aware, Council does not have any consents on the table at the moment for solar power. Perfect, thank you. So um, so if you wish to leave your notes here with us. Um, I can email them to you, Helen. Thank you. If you could do that, um, we will have a look at them and come back to you. But then also remember, we have an annual plan process, so the community can make submissions and come and speak. That is the time when we review what mm -hmm. what um, what our rates are doing, what projects are being spent on, et cetera. And that's your process opportunity to have a say along with everybody else. Yes, I definitely will be from now on. Okay. And I might see you around the council table next election. Ex Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your interest in what we do, and um, we'll carry on the discussion with you outside this meeting. Okay, so I'll just send that my notes to you, Helen, directly. Please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Oops. Right. Uh, item seven, no late items, no recommendations from committees. Uh, we can go straight to our uh, committee and group meetings. These are for your information. However, opportunity for liaison councillors to highlight what's going on in their various uh, community committees. Um, Councillor Bell, Bay Nessie Rangiotu. Uh, kia ora. So our Rōpū, our committee, haven't actually met in the last month, our committee have been really sick, so two meetings have been cancelled. But even though they haven't officially met, the community are still working really hard. And I just want to take the time to acknowledge James, who's been coming and helping with the fencing um, and finishing off our project. Um, it's just been really, really helpful. And also the operational team, we had an incident with a local resident close to the Udapa, and the committee had a little bit of a shenanigan over access. And so that was really good that council came in to mediate and identify who can actually go down the driveway. So that was really good de-escalation on the officer's part. So na mihi kia koutou. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Councillor Headfield, Glen Arua, Taipurea. Yeah. Thank you, Worship. Yeah, um, meeting on Tuesday night. Um, I think there's a few, um, they've been working on a project to, um, to um, construct a pathway from the school through to the hall. I think that's, that's gone pretty well. Um, but they do have a few queries of um, about some procedural issues, which they'll uh, get in touch with Janine about. Um, but other than that, all good. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, how come Councillor McFadgen's not here? Um, Councillor Quarry, Himatangi Beach. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Um, one of the points that was raised at the last meeting regarded the bollards that are on the stream. Now, there's, for those that don't know, or can't remember, you've got the surf club and you've got a stream that comes from inland heading out towards the sea. Now, there are bollards roughly equal to where the surf club is, and they are there to stop the logs that pile up there um, every spring tide or every heavy weather event. Now, what happens is that there's a massive number of logs that, that are, arrive, and the clearing of those logs, it's a horizons issue. Um, they're sort of pulled to one side and dumped and so forth. They become a bit of a um, a hazard for, for young people if they want to run across there. We've seen the um, occasion where a person in Gisborne, a young boy in Gisborne, was killed walking across logs that um, were floating. Um, so there is a lot of concern by the by the um, surf club in regard to the position of the bollards and they believe that if the bollards were placed further or closer to the sea um, that would go some way to mitigating the effect on the stream and it would also make it easier to clear them in the future they get to get it got to get a digger in there to lift <coughs> them and put them to one side and, and clear them and um, there perhaps needs to be a talk between MDC and Horizons in regard mm. to finding a permanent solution to that. So that seems to be one of the major concerns down there at the moment. Thank you. Thanks. Yes, I'm aware that's been an ongoing problem. Um, 
as with all our rivers and streams and where the water goes? Well, the horizons, um, I think it's primarily their issue, but, but there needs to be some input from MDC in regard to um, trying to you know, find a, a suitable solution. Thank you. Councillor Underwood, Huanui. Thank you. Um, Huanui are concentrating now on uh, pest eradication with the um, intent of increasing bird life around the area. And so they've got a, they've bought in a few traps which they're going to place and they're using the kids from the school to monitor the traps and enter data into um, an app which apparently then they can use at school to do projects. Excellent. Um, thank you. Uh, Rangawahia, um, I attended that meeting last week um, representing Councillor Hadfield, who was away. Um, the key issue for them is... Um, the, a positive is that there are a number of young children in the village. They've got nine that attend a playgroup there, um, and they also go down to the Kimbolton um, kindy down there, and the good news they shared with us was that they have found another group, not the Ruahini Kindergarten group, to take over, um, providing that service in Kimbolton, so that was just being sorted. Um, which is good. So their concerns were more around um, getting better signage into the village, um, warning them that warning motorists that there are children around, and also getting the bus route fully signposted from Kimbolton to Rangawahia. Uh, Councillor Hadfield, anything else for Rangi? Right, uh, Councillor Underwood, Rongatia. Yes, wrong to you. They were also concerned about um, the bus route and uh, the dangerous, dangerous area where the buses were stopping to pick up the school kids. But um, although they were told that it was impossible to move it, it's now been moved. So the kids are being picked up in the township. Um, the other thing, a one of the residents attended the meeting last week and suggested an annual kids market that she would be willing to organise. And um, that was supported by the committee. So that's hopefully going to go ahead in November. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Short, Tangi Maina. Thank you. Um, at the last meeting, there was a really good turnout. We advertised that we were going to be talking about the mobile recycling centre and green waste area in the village. So um, we got a good turnout of people. And then the following following Tuesday, last Tuesday of last week, I'd like to thank uh, Wurumu, Brittany and Nikki for coming out and having an on-site visit. Um, we had a good turnout of people there as well. Um, a number of issues were uh, identified and um, some ideas put forward on how things could improve. But I think everyone agreed that the site was a mess. And I hope that did the contractors go out and give it a good tidy up? Um, the immediate neighbours across the road are getting a whole lot of household rubbish from the recycling centre, which is odd because it's a recycling centre. Um, that's because people are fly tipping. So, um, so we're looking at um, all the options around how the um, container is located, where the fencing is. And one of the suggestions put forward uh, by the community, um, which I hope, Hamish has got a deep pocket at the moment, is perhaps to have it manned on a Saturday morning or every Saturday morning. It might get around some of the issues that they've they've been having. So we do want to thank the staff for coming out and uh, we hope there will be a resolution soon. Thank you. Uh, right, and I'm also aware that Kiwatia have met in this last month. Councillor Ford. Yeah, thank you. Um, last night, in fact. Uh, it was a good meeting. I think there were 10 of us there. Uh, they're in good spirits, very happy with council, um, doing more work on their hall, and we had a 20-minute field trip to the men's toilets, um, <laughs> which was very cold, uh, for a redesign of the toilets, and it's amazing how many different options were came up, but I relied totally on the localism approach and didn't say a, didn't say a word, 
So it was their, their toilets, their design. Uh, we also heard from the Kimbolton um, kindy lady who came along and confirmed that, yes, they're, um, they've got a replacement and it will be a kindergarten, just a different, but not Ruahini. Uh, so they're very pleased about that. Uh, and Tony War came and the um, Kimbolton Kiwatia RSA is, is being re reinstated or maybe has been reinstated and they were talking about Anzac Day, etc. cetera. So um, that's, they're, they're in <coughs> good, good shape. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Blackmore, Youth Council. Thank you. Um, primarily focused at the moment on supporting the Young Achievers Awards on the 23rd of September, uh, which is the Monday evening. Um, and then on the uh, previously discussed, the Youth Councillors joining Council on first week of the October school holidays. Uh, we're still progressing. We're just looking for a second date as well, since there's quite a few. Um, and working with the high school on that because it would be during school time and we're just trying to avoid exams. Thank you. And I, I think that's um, one that we should, once we have the date confirmed, we'll let you all know. And our plan is to um, partner you up with one of our young uh, youth council members. Um, depending how many turn up, you may have to have one on either side of you. Um, we'll spread the, them out with you. They will have the agenda prior to the meeting, as you do, um, and then we will ask you to look after those young people, um, talk them through what we're doing and why we're doing it, and then they will um, also have their own discussion and then a bit of a debrief. So it, it's all about trying to get young people interested in uh, council and their community. Councillor Quarry. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Um, the signage requested by Rangawai here, uh, can we ensure that that it takes place? Is there any obstacles with that um, being implemented? I have passed it on to the team and they have responded that they're, that they're looking into it and will come back to us. Thank you. Thank you. So um, that's a good roundup from around the district. So thank you for that and the work that you do with your community committees. Uh, moving on to item 10, we're on the officer's report. First one is 10.1. This is the delegations manual uh, amendment. We're on page 16, and I'm going to hand that over to Ash and Francis. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, so this is a pretty straightforward report. Um, it's basically in the same boat as those Resource Management Act amendments. Uh, the Local Government Rating Act also doesn't allow you to subdelegate powers to the Chief Executive, hence why it's coming to you. Um, the change we're asking you to approve is related to a job title change. So our team leader of rates and receivables, her role is slightly expanded in scope, uh, therefore it's changed job title and we need to update the manual. Um, so it's yeah, it's pretty administrative, but I'm happy to answer uh, any questions that you might have. Thank you. Any questions for Ash? It is, it is a straightforward change. If not, um, there is a recommendation on page 16. If I could have a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Short. I'd like to move that the council removes the team leader rates and receivables role from subsections 27, 37, 40, 41, 44, 251, 53, 57, 258, 62, 85 to 86 of section 8.1 of the Local Government Rating Act 2002 of the Delegations Manual and replaces it with the Finance Operations Team Leader role. Thank you. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Ford, thank you. Any questions, comments? Put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against? Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you. Right, thanks team. Uh, we move to page 20, and uh, this is formally recording the submissions that we have made on behalf of the community um, to the various legal proceedings that are going on, and there's been a lot of work behind the scenes with this. So, um, Lisa, welcome. Good morning, Your Worship. Good morning, councillors. 
Um, yeah, so this ta this report really is just to table the recent submissions that we've been doing. Um, as you're probably all aware, there's a lot happening in this space at the moment. Um, so these are kind of the ones from June to August, um, lodged by various officers, um, myself, um, Gina, Kimi, um, Richard, we've all sort of been involved in, in these submissions. I'm happy to take any questions on any of the individual submissions. Um, otherwise, I'm also happy to give an update on what I know is coming up um, for your information, if that would be useful. Thank you. Um, firstly, any questions in regards to the submissions that we have um, made? Um, other, to, other than to report that we did speak, uh, or our Deputy Mayor spoke to our submission regarding earthquake prone buildings um, we did that last week that was quite a quick turnaround I think Lisa the deadline for getting that submission in was last Thursday and then we spoke to it on Monday so um, that one's happening fast uh, any other questions in relations to the submissions we've done uh, Councillor Belsky just want to say thank you to your team um, I read the one um, supporting, um, or I read them all, but especially um, the one relating to supporting a farming um, situation of grazing and, and things like that. It, uh, I thought it was extremely good and appreciate the work you put into it. Thank you. Oh, I think that was Kimmy on that one, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so thank you, thank Kimmy. You. <laughs> yes, we do, off, we do need to uh, give a big shout out to yourself and Kimmy and the team. Um, and I think having the submissions focus group um, involving councillors is really helpful, mm. um, being able mm. to, because everyone has different knowledge um, and expertise and being able to share that. And hopefully that helps you when you're trying to put the words together. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know I will be coming to you shortly um, when the uh, road tolling one is out um, because I'm really interested in, in views on that. I'm not sure sort of where to start with that. So <laughs> I will definitely be. Um, We've got you know, that on, on our that. workshop this afternoon to discuss. So that will help give you some direction. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, Councillor Ford. If I can just um, add to Councillor Belsky's comments, <laughs> the, the thanks to everybody. Uh, those on the submissions team for around, from this, around this table, you and your team, um, my particularly the earthquake prone building one, um, Lisa, um, outstanding effort, and then very helpful um, suggestions on speaking notes as well, which I did use and I added to it <laughs> as you'd expect. Uh, and um, but incredibly helpful, thank you. Okay. Great. Um, so coming up is tell us a bit more about that. Okay. Um, so we've got uh, the next Resource Management Act amendment bill coming up. Um, we don't have an exact date on that, but that will include um, enabling housing growth, um, including making medium density residential standards optional for councils, um, speeding up consenting timeframes for renewable energy and wood processing, uh, supporting government's infrastructure for the future plan, and speeding up the process for making national direction under the RMA. Um, and also some things around um, the highly productive land to exclude LUC3 and introducing emergency response regulations to enable effective responses to emergencies and contribute to long-term recovery. So that will definitely be one we'll want to keep an eye out for. Um, on the 10th of September is one we've already mentioned. Uh, oh no, sorry, there's another one. Um, so Ministry of Transport's consulting on a long-term insights briefing on travel demand. Um, I think, Kimi, did you circulate that submission yesterday? Yeah, yeah. so that one's open for feedback um, at the moment from you all. Uh, that one closes on the 10th of September. Um, on the 6th of October, there's a draft strategy to prevent and minimise gambling harm. So obviously Gina and I are looking at that um, to see its relationship to our current policy that we are consulting on. Um, on the 7th of October is the proposal to toll new roads. So that's the one we're talking about at workshop today. On the 30th of October is MB seeking feedback on work health and safety regulatory system. Um, review. I have drafted an MDC submission on that. I'm also working on a joint MWLAS submission on that topic, um, and that those submissions are almost ready to circulate. So as soon as I finish the joint MWLAS one, I'll be circulating those both together. Um, so hopefully later this week. 
and yeah, there's quite a, a few submissions kind of sitting on the pending um, where we don't know um, they're kind of with um, private member bills, so we don't know whether they'll happen or not. But um, as we get more information, we'll, we'll share that as well. Great. Thank you. Yeah, and it it, it is worth, um, you know, it takes a lot of time and effort from everybody, particularly uh, our staff, um, but it is well worth it. And yesterday's meeting um, face to face with the minister is a really good example of um, putting our voice out there, making sure we're heard, following the process, um, and and we are making a difference. So I think that's the key thing. It's well worth doing. So thank you for all your work. Welcome. Thank you. Right. We move to page seventy eight, and this. Is, Oh, sorry. Yes, jumping, jumping. Um, there is a recommendation on page 20. Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Councillor Hadfield. Yeah, I'm happy to move, Your Worship, and, and uh, probably opportune to note that in the Deputy Mayor's uh, presentation um, on Monday, I'm, a sh I'm sure there would have been a lack of verbosity and, uh, and uh, great attention uh, to detail. So well done, Michael. Uh, anyhow, Your Worship, i um, happy to move that the Council receives and notes the listed submissions lodged on behalf of the Manawatu District Council between 21 June uh, and 12 August 2024. Thank you. Do I have a second to please, Councillor Underwood? Thank you. Any further discussion? I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against? The motion is carried. Thank you. Right, we turn to page 78. Uh, this is the Community Development Policy Update. Um, you will recall that this came to Council back in August um, and we had some discussion on it and asked the team to go back and take on board some of the discussion and bring it back to Council. Um, also noting that the um, Marae and Hapu Committee Policy is a separate document which will come back to Council at a later date. Uh, we needed to get this one through to um, set the dates for the community development closing um, process. So I'll hand it over to Aidy and Lynn. Thank you, Worship. Good morning, um, councillors. You've, you, um, Mayor Helen has taken the words out of our mouth and um, <laughs> done the introduction for the paper. And so, as Mayor Helen said, you know, part of the reason of bringing this policy back to you today is so that the, particularly for the priority services um, funding recipients, that we bring that date forward. So, if they're not successful, then they do have some time to go out and and attempt to um, uh, receive third party funding from other sources. The policy as it stands now gives them very little time to do that. So um, as Mayor Helen said, we will be coming back to council on um, separately on the Marae and Hapu funding. And so those references have been removed from the policy. It's as it stood um, prior to that. We do note that on page um, 91 of the 91 of the papers, um, I think it's page nine in the policy, that there is um, remains a reference to Na Manu Taiko and uh, for Urupa funding. And um, Janine is for the last three years has continued to work with Marae reps that were previously previously on Na Manu Taiko, but we were, when we come back. Um, to council again with the we, sh we should have made a change this time to that but when we come back um, with the next um, update around the community development policy we'll make a change at that time if council's satisfied with that Thank you um, So are you saying you're not recommending that we make a change amendment today to this policy um, We can do, but I would prefer to spend a little bit of time with Janine just confirming um, that before we come back. Okay. Thank you. Any discussion, comments on the proposed changes in this policy? Councillor Bell. Morena Kurua. Um, thank you, 
for tabling this today, even if it, you know, we we haven't really have a full complete package for us to pass through. Just being considerate to the changing of the name from Namanu Taiako to Te Kotu e Reo Taumata. So Namanu Taiako is now deceased. Um, and we have had a rebirth. Um, and if we could keep that in mind, keep us consistent when we table our reports at the table. Yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And we just noticed that this morning, unfortunately, or else. Thank you. I, uh, thank you, Council Bell. That's why I was wondering, can we tidy that up today by uh, making an amendment to the wording in 5.6? We can. We can. We can just change the name. Um, but my assumption is that you want to do further than the name and you want to you want Janine to work with I just want her to um, confirm that she's still continuing the same process yeah because yep. I think the process has shifted with new membership yep. so just yeah I, I would okay I'm just conscious that if we adopt it today um, as is, it's knowing that there is um, something in there that needs to be corrected um, or, yeah, I guess because we want to get this date confirmed, don't we? Yes. That's the most important part yeah. of it. Okay, so it it will have to be what it is. Councillor Short. Unless we change the wording of the recommendation, which could go something along the lines of that council adopt the community development policy attached full stop, um, noting further amendments to the private cemetery and Urupa funding wording yet to be finalised or something like that. I don't know what. Councillor Hadfield. Yeah, thanks, Your Worship. Look, I'd, I'd um, support Councillor Short's comments because um, it seems to me no, rather puerile to, um, to, to um, sign off on something that's clearly got a mistake in it. I'm not quite sure that that's actually what we should be doing. So I definitely support Councillor Short's mm -hmm. um, acknowledgement of the fact that there is a change to come. Yep. Thank you. Um, so can we... Could... could uh, it's Section 5.6, Application Process, that needs to be reconsidered. Your Worship. Could the recommendation say that the council adopt the community development policy attached and um, with an amendment to the reference to the Urupa? Yes, um, and give the um, CE delegation to uh, sign off that, so that amendment. The amendment would be to 5.6. Application process. Yeah. That the council adopt the community development um, policy attached with an amendment to 5.6 as approved by the chief executive. Uh, um, and um, designate authority to the chief executive under designation to the chief executive. Something like that, Steph. <laughs> um, once you've done that, are you able to throw it up on the screen so we can have a look at it, please? Right, that's um, coming up. Right, so well, I'll move that the council adopt the community development policy attached subject to an amendment to section 5.6 application process under delegated authority of the chief executive. 
seconded by Councillor Short. Any further discussion? Put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Motion is carried. Thanks, team. Thanks very much. Uh, right, we have no late items this morning, so we can go straight to item 12, which is uh, to move into our public excluded business. And I will move that the public be excluded from the following parts of the proceedings of this meeting, namely confirmation of minutes and the release of public excluded resolutions to open session. Have a move, I have a seconder, Councillor Ford. Put the motion, all those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against? Motion is carried. Thank you.